سبحان الله وبحمد الله لا إله إلا الله سبحان الله وبحمد الله لا بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace and blessings and mercy of God Almighty be upon you Now today we're outside standing in front of the ocean and the beautiful shoreline and we're going to go over some very basic simple concepts from the Quran about believing in a creator these concepts are not unreasonable, they're not illogical, but in fact, they're quite reasonable and logical. To find something that has been designed, it would mean that there is a designer. To find a creation, such as us, that have been created and we didn't exist before, we should know that we have been created. So, let's look at the Quran here, what it says about these things in chapter number 3, verse 190. There truly are signs in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alternation of night and day for those with understanding who remember God standing, sitting and lying down who reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth. Our Lord, you have not created all of this without purpose and indeed we have a purpose in this life and it's up to us to find out what that purpose is. As Muslims, my purpose is to worship Allah alone without partner. Now, looking at another verse, chapter 30, verse 7. The thing is, a believer will look around himself, he'll study the environment, he'll reasonably come to the conclusion that there is a creator and that we have a purpose in this life. In fact, if we see a, you know, a hospital and we go inside of it with a broken leg and we ask someone for help and they say, no sir, we don't accept any patients, we have no purpose, we're just a building with all the people filled inside of it and there's no reason for us to be here. I mean, this is not, this is not reasonable to assume that. So how can we, how can us, living in this uh, earth, assume that all of this has been placed here for no apparent reason? that it came out as a matter of chance because the, you know nothing exploded and it turned into everything you see here. Th these things are not, it's not reasonable to assume that that occurred. However, it is reasonable to assume that because we were not created before and something initiated the creation, that there is a great and powerful being who did, in fact, uh, initiate the creation. Now, what does it say about those who do not believe? They only know the outer surface of this present life and are heedless of the life to come. And you find this with many of the people who disbelieve in God. They're concerned solely for themselves, for their family, uh, for their work. They're so tied up with it. You know, they watch TV for hours and hours a day, just wasting their life. Instead of worshiping God and looking at this beautiful creation, which we live in. Now, <clears throat> some of the things here. If I'm going to look at this creation and see how amazing and beautiful it is, what are some of the, you know, the things do upon me upon realizing that there is one great creator and there is no other than that? It says here, about worshipping Allah alone. <clears throat> People, worship your Lord who created you and those before you so that you may be mindful of Him who spread out the earth for you and built the sky, who sent water down from it and with the water produced things for your sustenance. Do not, knowing this, set up rivals to God. So we're commanded and instructed to worship only God alone and not take a partner with Him. Now, it says here in chapter 67 verse 2, in the middle of verse 2, He is the mighty, the forgiving, who created the heavens, seven heavens, one above another. You will not see any flaw in what the Lord of mercy creates. So as we can see outside here, beautiful sky, beautiful sea, it doesn't just split open and come together again and you know, we don't just fly off because gravity stops working. So as we've been saying, there is a designer and a creator. Now let's look at some specific examples from the Quran and discuss these things. One of them is the bee. And this is actually found in the chapter number 16, verse 68 and 69. <clears throat> and your Lord inspired the bees saying, build yourselves houses in the mountains and trees and what people construct. Then feed on all kinds of fruit and follow the ways made easy for you by your Lord. From their bellies comes a drink of different colors in which there is a healing for people. There truly is a sign in this for those who think. Now, the bee takes the pollen, turns it into honey, and we actually eat that honey and ingest it. It's sweet, and as the Quran says, there is a healing in it uh, for people. Now let's look at this bee. The bee starts off, let's say, as the queen bee. It starts building a hive and laying its eggs. And different kinds of bees come out. One is either the worker bee or the male bee, or they could be future queens uh, as well. Anyway, these worker bees leave the nest and they go outside and finding a food source. They find some plants and they get the pollen from them and they go to other plants and fertilize other plants but this is a different miracle. Anyway, the bees will come back to the hive. So how is it that the bees know where to go? They go to their hive. How do they know how to get back there and how do they get inside it? Aren't there guards guarding the way? Yes, there are. Now the bees actually follow a scent trail 
produced by the Nazanov gland, which is built onto the bee. An amazing biological uh, you know, circumstance. These bees will come back to their hive and find it. And now to go inside, they use the same thing. They don't have an ID card, they don't use retinal scan you know, technology. They go inside because they have the same scent as their hive. And all the hives in the world have different scents, or at least specific scents, to their own hive. Bee goes inside, he's filled with pollen, you know, it's all over him, it's ingested inside of him. And he goes to this hexagon-shaped, you know, house. This is, a, Allah says, that he inspired them to build their homes. They don't use a circle, they don't use a square, they don't use a triangle, they use a hexagon. A six-sided uh, shape. Now, these shapes are all throughout their whole hive. He goes to one of these uh, empty units, dumps his honey inside of it, which actually comes out of him. So for me or you, we can't go outside and eat a bunch of plants and then we throw up all of this honey. I mean, it doesn't happen with us because we weren't created that way. We weren't designed that way. But the one who designed the bee is the greatest designer of all. And that is the one who, when he eats pollen, he throws up this honey. It's quite amazing. SubhanAllah, glory be to God, best of creators. Now, after he does this and he seals it over with wax, airtight seal, you know, he didn't use Ziploc, he didn't use saran wrap, he used wax over top of it, sealed it shut. Then he has to tell the other bees how to get to this food source. So does he talk with them? No, bees can't speak. But they do communicate in a different way, unlike uh, you or I. They use mathematics, and specifically trigonometry. So the bee will actually do a bee dance, going around in circles, touching the other bees at different angles, telling them based on the sun, the angles and the distance to the food source. Who was the one who inspired them? This is God, and none other. Now, the bees, upon uh, you know, touching this other bee, they leave the hive and they fly to the food source from the sun. So what happens if it's really cloudy and they can't see the sun? Doesn't matter. Because the great creator has given these bees the ability to see with ultraviolet light. So even in, in fully clouds, in, in full cloud cover, they know exactly where the sun is, they know exactly how to fly to their food source and find it and come back to their hive again, and the cycle continues. So in this, I think, is a great example showing that there is a designer because of these great abilities which the bee has, which could not have happened by chance. So now let's go on to the example of a spider. In the Quran, chapter number 29, verse number 41, those who take protectors other than God can be compared to spiders building themselves houses. The spiders are the frailest of all houses if only they could understand. So if we look at an ant home or an ant hill, we look at a beehive, we look at a you know, termite, their home made of that strong uh, material with mud and, and liquid, and we compare that to the spider's house, you know, the spider's is much more frailer. And God is comparing those who take a partner uh, in worship with him, such as having the weakest house and the weakest uh, ability to stay safe. Now, looking at the miracle of the spider here and what the spiders do in constructing their houses, or some spiders. Now, this web which they construct is such that it has strong strands, structural supports, which are not sticky. And they attach these things to different points around an area, and then they go around in a circular, uh, circular fashion with a different kind of strand, with a sticky substance. Now, when another bug or uh, insect flies through or falls into that web, it will get stuck to the sticky portion of the web, and the spider will either see it or uh, feel it, depending on where uh, the web is moving. And the spider will go to that source and bite it or wrap it up with uh, first some silk and then bite it. You know, it's, it's quite amazing. How is it that the spider learned how to make these webs? You know, did it just decide one day that, you know, walking around on the ground and hunting for food is, is pretty hard. So I'm going to just start producing some excrement from my body and wiping it all over some place and then the bug's just going to get stuck there and I'm going to eat it. Of course these things happen because the Creator inspired His creation with certain abilities, such that the spider can build a home in this fashion and can catch its prey. Looking at a different example now is that of a butterfly. And it having two eyes on the back of its wings, or some butterflies. Now the thing is, how did this butterfly come from a caterpillar or a larva and then go to a cocoon and then go turn into this flying insect and then have these two eyes on the back of its wings so that when a predator comes to it and sees it, the butterfly can open its wings, the bird, the small bird being a predator to the butterfly will get afraid, fly away, and then the butterfly is safe. Who is it that designed the butterfly in this way? 
This is God, the greatest of creators. Glory be to him. Now, can you say that this butterfly, all of a sudden, you know, it noticed that all of his friends were always getting killed and dying, and it's like, okay guys, we need to establish a learning center, a university, uh, let's make a college, we're all gonna work together, we're gonna write a book, we're gonna make some films, and educate each other on how to avoid uh, being killed by these birds or other animals. Or is it that one day they were just thinking all of a sudden that, hey, why don't we look like the owl, uh, you know, have owl eyes on, the, on our back, and so we'll scare small birds. So, boonk, and then they turned into having these eyes on the back of their wings. No, this is not the case. But these insects were created and inspired by the Lord of Mercy, God, who is the creator of everything, and the creator of this beautiful, beautiful scene which we're standing in front of here. <clears throat> and he is the best of creators. Now, subhanAllah, glory be to him. We've looked at some great examples today of design in the creation. Now, when an intelligent person sees this design and sees the life in this earth as we see it, one should say that, glory be to God, there is a great creator in this universe who has created his creation, who has formed this thing that we see. We should not come to the conclusion that these things happen by accident. I mean, it's really, to me, it's quite unreasonable to assume that design happened everywhere that we see in the universe, everywhere in the earth, and all of this design happened by accident. Come on, you know, this doesn't make any sense. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that God guides me and all of us to the truth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.